Ja, 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 ja. Oh ja, dat is de grandma. <laughs> grandma. Okay, beautifuls. Um, welcome back to Women, Wine and Wisdom. I'm Jimmy. I'm Naomi. And today we're going to be shooting a Get to Know Us video. Yes. So a lot of you have mentioned that you want to get to know us a little bit. Um, that you didn't know much about us. I mean, people who know me know me. People who know Jimmy know Jimmy. Yeah. But you know, we want us. We want you all to get to know us as a duo. Exactly. So, we're gonna do a get to know us. We're gonna ask each other twelve questions. Yeah. And we want you to tune in and let us know your thoughts. Absolutely. Get involved in the comments. So you know we want to introduce some wine. Introduce so, it. Today we have three Gables. Mm -hmm. It's a twenty twenty one wine. Mm. It's a South African wine. Mm. I do like South African wine. Okay. Generally speaking. I've heard really good stuff about South African wine. Yeah. So again, as I'm not the biggest white wine drinker, now we're growing <laughs> into our palates and stuff and enjoying them. But it's 13.5%, so yeah. Enjoy. Enjoy. Well, we're going to enjoy anyway. <laughs> we'll definitely link the description in the comments. Excited to taste this. Like I said, I enjoy white wine. So hopefully, well, not white wine, South African wine. So hopefully, this tastes quite um, yummy. I hope so too. Do you know what? Should we just cheers? Let's, let's just cheers. Okay. Mm. Interesting. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. 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 I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm not sure. Tune in, guys, and we'll give you our feedback halfway through. So, yeah, I'm not sure yet. I don't know how I feel, but throughout, I'll we'll sit. let you know. Okay, so as Naomi said, we're going to ask each other twelve questions. Yes. Um, because I'm a busybody, I'm going to go first and ask her <laughs> and ask her the twelve questions. Of course. Um, so let me get my questions out. Ooh. Okay, baby girl, are you ready? Hit me. Okay, so would you rather? Mm -hmm. Skydive or bungee jump? Definitely skydive. Okay. With bungee jumping, you're just taunting me. Like, Fair. I'm going up, I'm going down, I'm going up, mm -hmm. I'm going down. I just want to like hurry up and let's get it over with. Do you understand? Once I t when I see land, I want to know that I'm landing. <laughs> so yeah. Okay, cool. Skydive. I've done both, guys. Do both. <laughs> um, what advice? This question number two. So, what advice would you give your younger self? Um, definitely to just be more daring. Just, you know, just throw yourself out there. Don't be fearful. Just, you know, try new things. Break mm -hmm. the rules, you know. Invest more as well. Like, you know, invest early. Like, yeah. save your money, invest early. Those kind of things, yeah. I love that because rules are meant to be broken, guys. So always live your life the way you want to live it. So, and be more daring. Love that. Following from that, sorry, this is not part of the questions. Are there things, when you said be more daring, are there things that you would do now that you hadn't done when you were younger? I think I'll just take more chances. So, for example, okay. I always said that I wanted to live abroad. Um, mm -hmm. And I haven't done that. I mean, I did when I was younger. That doesn't quite count. Why doesn't it quite count? Because I went there because my mom sent me to Nigeria. <laughs> but <laughs> That's very different. Yeah, that's very but different. That's very different. So, I think as an adult, I wanted to take myself to somewhere else to just work for, whether it be a few months or a year. So, I just kind of wish I just took the leap of faith after uni and went and did that. Yeah, I absolutely recommend it. So yeah. Um, what makes you unique? Um, I think I'm personable. Yeah. I think like I genuinely just, when I, vi I vibe with people fairly easily, um, unless you've got a dark spirit and soul, I don't know. But, <laughs> <laughs> but generally speaking, I'm quite personable and I think that's what makes me unique. Okay. Um, what's something that always makes you smile? Food. <laughs> I love food too. I'm sorry guys, but <laughs> food, especially if you put Nigerian food in front of mm. me and there's a particular dish called abula. Mm, of course. Oh God. <laughs> abula just makes me so happy. Can you see the way I'm smiling? You see? You're so not serious. <laughs> so, I mean, I would have said music, but food is life. So is I can't life. even, but I prefer pounded yam to abula. So mm, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's your favorite feature on your face? I have to say my smile. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> I knew you would say that, but yeah. It has to be my smile. Um, <laughs> but I also like my eyes, to be fair. Yeah, um, eyes are important. Yeah. Always, even on the opposite sex, eyes are important. <laughs> um, ooh, mm. actually no. I'm skipping questions now. So, favorite holiday destination? <sighs> this is a tough one for me to answer because 
I feel like, hmm. I mean, for me personally, I love Nigeria. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> But people might say I'm biased because I am Nigerian. Um, but I love Nigeria. I just love the fact that when you go there, people just, you know, my Nigerian name is Falake. So when I go there, I love the fact that people can just say Falake and pronounce it well. And mm. when I'm here, it's like Faux Lake. It's just irritating. Faux Lake, you know. So, wow. yes, believe it or not. So, wow. um, <laughs> you know, it's just nice to be around people who are your people, culture, food. It's just very easy. But then at the same time, I do also, if I'm not being biased, um, Places, a place that I've really enjoyed has been Dubai because you get a bit of city, mm. but you also get a beach. So it's mm. a bit of balance. Um, and there's still a bit of Nigerian culture there. And then, <laughs> but if I'm talking about places I would like to go, I'd probably say places like Tokyo, um, which has a lot of culture. And if you know me, you know that I'm into history. I'm into you culture. Really are. So really any, <laughs> I, do, I love it, don't I? So, you know, I love to research into it. You know, I love all that stuff. And, um, Japan is just filled with that, so I'd love to experience that if I go mm. to Japan. Japan's um, Japan. on my list. Yeah. I can't lie to you. Beautiful. Okay, I really like this question. Um, what book changed your life? And the thing is, we all know Naomi, aka for like I can never give one answer. So I can never. I'm expecting three or four Listen, books. For why this not one. give out more? <laughs> I'm trying to give more. Give okay. more to people. So um, I do. I mean, if I'm talking about like books that are kind of like in- inspiring. Then I'll definitely say good, um, good dad, rich. Wait, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not wait, huh? <laughs> Let me re- reload that, reload. Yeah. That. If I'm talking about books that were inspiring, it's definitely rich dad, um, rich dad, poor dad. That I book, roll. <laughs> do you know what? For some people, it's probably like just a very obvious answer, but generally for me, I feel like it has changed a lot of people's lives and is popular for a reason, guys. Come on. No, true. Let's be true. honest. The thing is, and as so, well, I think it depends on what age you read the book because I know you would have read it when yeah, you were much older. I yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so I think it was the first time that I really understood the difference between assets and liabilities. Mm-hmm. So I think it's very, it's a, it's a very good book. It's very inspiring. If you haven't read it, definitely read it. Um, but I'm sure most people have at this point in their lives. Um, but also, and also a book called Strength Finder. That's, that taught me a lot about different, like understanding your strengths and your weaknesses. Yeah. Um, Guys, if you haven't noticed yet, for like I talked with her eyes. I so like do. pay attention to her eyes when she's speaking. Oh, stop. <laughs> Guys, don't. <laughs> you want to be like traumatized. But yeah, I think Strength Finder is a very big one. Um, I think it teaches me a lot about strengths and weaknesses. So I think definitely, if you haven't read it, Read it. It's very, very important. I think you, everyone should know their strengths. Um, okay. But also, if I'm looking at a create from a creative perspective, I think uh, books like The Artist's Way and um, books like books from Omar Tyree, particularly a book called Fly Girl. That was one of the first like, novels that, that I read. It's amazing. Okay. It's amazing. It's I've so one, but... it was one of those books that kind of triggered my creative mind, okay. and it made me want to write a novel. Which Interesting. I'm working on. But anyway. Mm-hmm. By the um, way, guys, she just said she's working on something. So oh we're going to expect you to my. hold her accountable to that. But yeah. Guys, don't, please. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I think um, that triggered my creative side. Artist Way is an amazing book. It teaches you so much about how to really get into the create your creative space, whether you're a creative writer. So if you do playwright or writing novels or things like that, it's a good way to really understand ways of learning how to write creatively. Um, and also a book called um, Noughts and Crosses. That book... I've read that one. Is... It's a good book. I cannot even deal. Like, Mallory Blackman is amazing. Mm-hmm. I always think I say her name wrong. It's either no, Mallory, Mallory or Mal- Mallory. It is what it is. Anyway, <laughs> that book is amazing, and it's a series. So 100% delve into it. It's amazing. Yeah. Okay. One thing I want to pick up on um, is you said about strength finder and strengths and weaknesses. Mm. How do you feel about strengths and weaknesses? Because... I'm an advocate for really like working on your strengths. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you feel about the strengths and weaknesses? Are you an advocate for oh. either or? What's your listen? What's just your view in everything I do. The I'm eyes. looking at strengths, <laughs> guys. Don't even mind that. <laughs> but in everything I do, when I'm working, when I'm dealing with people, it's always strengths and weaknesses. When I'm working okay. with my team, it's strengths and weaknesses. I un- I really think it's important to understand people's strengths and weaknesses when you're working with them, but also you. Okay. As a person, mm-hmm. like me and Jimmy always say this off camera, like we're always <laughs> talking about, you know, some of my strengths and some of her strengths yeah. versus our weaknesses and mm-hmm. how we can both fill the gap. It yeah. might be things like, for example, you know, social media, you know, if you've 
you know, started a business, but you're very, very bad at social media. Like you, you're in fact, you're not even bad. You're just uninterested. Mm. You don't like it. You're not interested in doing it. Yeah. You can outsource those kind of things, you know, in order to know, like you don't need to waste your time doing things that you don't care to do. You can pay people to do those things. Yeah, don't waste delegation and that delegation. Come yeah. on. Yeah, I think it's really good. It's really important that you said that we talk about our strengths and weaknesses because mm. there's so many things that I feel like is really amazing at that I'm not so good at, and vice versa. Mm. So I feel like we kind of complement each other in that aspect. That's so okay, love yeah. the fact that you brought that up. Um, okay, describe yourself in three words. Ah, this is gonna be hard. <laughs> Here you we know go. Me, I like to talk. So, <laughs> um, I think. Fun, yeah. Caring, hundred percent, and ambitious. Talk about it. <laughs> Let them know. Let them know. Definitely an ambitious. To be honest, person. I'm surprised you didn't come up with four or five words. But you know what? I'm proud of you. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying to just you know condense things. Okay. Do you believe that people can change? No. She said it. Not me, guys. I mean, I agree, but <laughs> it's a no. It's a no. You mm-hmm. cannot change. You are who you are. Um, I think you can grow. You can definitely grow, okay. but you can't change. Okay. You are who you are. And so I feel like, you know, rather than saying, like, rather than assuming you're going to change, like, if you if you were once an alcoholic, all you have to do is put alcohol in front of you and you'll probably start drinking again. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's let's be real. Know yourself. Be mm. true to yourself. Like, know who you are. Um, yeah. Another example it's, you always give with that as well is the cake example. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. So you always say like, if you love cake, you're not just gonna stop loving cake. You're not gonna you're on stop a diet. loving cake. Let me tell you, <laughs> if just because I've started going to the gym, bang, 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 I've lost weight, I'm looking snatched. I'm not gonna stop loving cake or super malt <laughs> or abula. Oh, super malt. Like I'm gonna. Yeah. <laughs> you see what I mean, guys? Just yeah. don't even mind her. <laughs> but um, you know, I feel like you are who you are, so you can't change. Like whatever you loved yesterday is what you're gonna love today. But mm. maybe you develop new habits in order to understand okay cool i can't have that right now i need to be able to have that maybe as a luxury as a treat mm. so yeah. yeah you are who you are okay cool this is a good question <laughs> i like this question okay if you was an animal <laughs> what animal would you be please oh, don't say yeah. mosquito about that. <laughs> and don't come for me and say mosquito is not an animal please <laughs> i'm so done with you um i definitely would say probably an elephant Mm-hmm. Elephants are wise. They are. Yeah. And so for me, I would like to consider myself an elephant. I do feel like I, um, like I move, that like anyone that knows me knows that I'm a family person, knows yeah. that I love my friends, mm-hmm. you know, and elephants tend to move with their people. Well, their herd. Their, their herd. I don't know if that's the right <laughs> word, but you know what I mean. Yeah. yeah. Well, at least herd is better than people. <laughs> they're definitely not people. But, um, yeah, they will move with the herd. They they're very loyal to to yeah. the to their herd. So I think it's um yeah, that's definitely me. Um, wise wisdom, you know, that's what this pod is about. So yeah, I mean, women wine of wisdom. Do you know what? Cheers. Cheers. Let's just cheers. <laughs> I'm gonna ask you a question mm. while I've got a sit first. Mm-mm-mm. So what's the first feature you notice on the opposite sex? Listen. Guys, it's got to be your smile. Mm. And in that smile, your teeth have to move somewhat correct. But yeah, <laughs> the, smile, <laughs> the smile, it's all about the smile. I think mm. a beautiful smile can just brighten up the room. Yeah. Um, and so if you smile well, I'm n- naturally going to just be like, who is that? Um, but also, if I was to take it one step further, if I could just throw one more. Yeah, f- as in do it. Um, we, already, we know you by now. So... <laughs> um, I'd say hairline, like, and the thing is, if you're if you're if you're bald, you're bald. Like, mm-hmm. it's fine. You know, if you rock it well, you rock it well, and um, there's no discrimination. Like, bald men can be handsome. Like, yeah, Morris Chestnut, come on, is handsome. But um, <laughs> and he's got an amazing smile. You look know? at her. Look you at her. That? <laughs> but um, I think a like, if you do have hair, just a nice shape up. Like, keep all sharp, just edges. Okay, so the last question for you yeah. is, what is one fun fact about you? Mm. Fun fact about me? Yes. I... Ooh, it's a tough question <laughs> right now. It is a tough one. I feel like I've been quite, you know, okay up until now. It just yeah. kind of caught me off guard. Um, I would say a fun fact about me is that I like 
I enjoy playwright. I enjoy mm. writing stuff. I'm a, I like creativity. So I actually like um, typing up like things. I feel like I learned something new just now because I know you like to write, but playwright is interesting. Yeah. I don't think I've ever heard you say playwright before. So I actually did it um, a few years ago. Mm. Like I say a few years ago, about 10 years ago. Um, <laughs> but I did it. Um, I used to write plays um, and I just get joy out of it. Like just kind of, getting lost in the idea of somebody else's mind and just creating something new and just like playing on things. I think it's, um, I think it can be quite fun. Okay. Just kind of stepping out of your world and create, oh, sorry. Stepping out of your world and creating a new, you know, world for this new character. Yeah. I enjoy things like that. I'm so imagi imaginative. Imaginative, yeah. Guys, I'm struggling with the words. I reckon it's the wine, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm um I enjoy like creating new wor worlds and like playing on things like that. So yeah, definitely. I love it's it. It's really interesting and I and I'm glad that you are that way inclined because mm. I feel like for me, I'm very much logical, very mm. much literal. As a, so I see things in words as opposed to like that creative aspect of me. I'm creative mm. in other ways, but less more so in that way. So it's interesting. Yeah. It is. I mean, to be honest, it's like, I think everyone has a level of creativity to them. Because yeah. when I was reading The Artist's Way, it taught me a bit about the fact that we have, you know, everyone has the creative side and the literal side. Mm. Um, I mean, guys, correct me, because I know there's an actual term for it. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, and I think, because I used to think like that, you know, I used to think that the creative side would always be people who knew how to draw well or yes. who could you know maybe paint things and just those kind of more obvious ways of being creative or like maybe singing or things like that but no there's other ways of being creative and that could still be in theory so for example in writing but it you know it's 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 just different for everyone but everyone definitely has a creative side to them. no i do agree everyone does have a creative side yeah. i do agree Okay, those are your 12 questions. My 12 questions. Yeah. So wine o'clock, guys. We're going to talk about the wine that we've been drinking. Um, I still do don't know think? how I feel about it, you know. Yeah. I think, like, it's... It's interesting because it's, like, it's not sharp, but mm -hmm. it's not sweet. It's very yeah. much in the middle. I will say I'm a little bit disappointed because I typically do like South African wines. Yeah, it's very much in the middle. There's nothing special mm. that shouts out to me about this particular piece of, like this particular wine. Yeah, I don't think I would personally order this again. I'm sorry, mm. but I'm going to score it a low two out of 10. Mm, I would have said three. Okay. okay. <laughs> I would have said three. You'll be fair. I think it's, I think for me, it just doesn't give what I'm looking for it to give. And I think it kind of, I mean, it tastes like you know like if you've gone out on a work drink like cheap wine and mm. you're like they smells the, like it to be fair yeah you know like when you yeah. smell people vomit on the road because they've been drinking wine oh my god too much yeah no tmi <laughs> <laughs> tmi no, but, but yeah. i'm really not enjoying this i'm just managing but um yeah i personally don't think it's very pleasant so it's one of those wines we would not recommend for you um <laughs> but yeah we'll still link it in we'll still link it just in case you want to try you it you might want to try it for exactly. your own i don't know <laughs> But it's not all that. Um, um, okay. okay, so going. Back. I don't know if I, I'm like, am I ready for these questions, <laughs> girl? We'll, we'll, we're gonna we're gonna see. find out. We're gonna yeah. find out. Um, so get to know Jimmy. Mm. First Jim, question, Jim, Jim, Jim indeed. <laughs> um, how would your friends describe you? Okay, that's a no, that's a okay question. <laughs> um, so I think my friends would describe me as ambitious, mm. a go getter. Mm thoughtful mm. i hope they say cute <laughs> <laughs> i'm very family orientated as well i think they would yeah. say that i'm um, helpful yeah yeah you are thanks babes you are. <laughs> i think they would say helpful um fun mm -hmm. and very playful i think they would describe me as playful and I th it's funny because people don't think i'm as playful yeah but um yeah. i think they would say that no 100 percent um, I think you definitely hit it on the nail on the head on those. Like you <laughs> got it right. You got it right. Number two, what was a pivotal moment in your life that became the turning point? It's really interesting, and I always say to people that I hope that they don't wait till they have something drastic happen to happen to them before they mm. change. But for me, mine was 2017, um, and I talk about it in my book, 20 nothing, 20 something, where I say I had surgery. It was a five hour surgery at the time, um, 
And for me, I feel like I woke up a different person. Mm. Yeah, I woke up a different person. Um, and that definitely was a pivotal moment for me in my life. Wow. Yeah, 100%. Wow. Mm. Guys, don't wait until that moment happens. Like, Yeah, I always say that. Yeah. I'm like, try and change now if you want to change. Mm. And we say change and put yeah. in speech marks because you really grow, to yeah. be honest. Um, but yeah. Amazing. Mm -hmm. um, if there were five extra hours in a day, how would you spend them? <laughs> Sleeping. <laughs> of course you would. Of course. Yeah, so I would definitely sleep. If you know mm. me, you know I love sleep. Mm. Um, I would definitely work towards my goals. I mean, that's what we do. You know, we talk about the 12 yeah. week year. We talk about working in days. Yeah. So that would definitely be another thing I would do. Mm -hmm. And my family absolutely know I love them. My friends mm. absolutely know I love them. So I would spend more time with them. Oh, that's beautiful. Thanks, babes. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you could have lunch with anyone in the world, who would it be and why? That's a good question, you know. Mm. You really need to delve into the why, by the way. Okay. So I feel like everyone's mm. going to think I'm going to say a celebrity and I'm really not that way inclined. Mm. So I think for me, if yeah. I was to have lunch with anybody, it would be my younger self. Oh, wow. And I would tell her, a couple of hard truths. What would you tell her, Jimmy? <laughs> what would you tell her? I would literally tell her, people are going to stop you along the way. Mm. Mind your business and keep it moving. <laughs> Do you see what I mean? That's yeah. definitely one thing. Discipline yeah. is another thing I would tell myself. I feel like there's so many things that I didn't do then mm. um, that I should have done. Um, and I think Bradley has said something along the lines of, if you don't sacrifice for what you want now, what you want becomes a sacrifice. Mm. And I definitely have felt that in my in my adult life. Yeah. So I would definitely tell my younger self that. I mean, there are a few other things, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember um, working with this guy once in the previous workplace and he was saying, you know, you've got a sacrifice in your 20s in order to enjoy in your 30s. Yeah. Did I take that advice? No. <laughs> anyway, so. <laughs> yeah, and it's interesting because you know how but they say like the 30s important. is the new yeah. 20s and yeah. it's actually not true. No. So I think there's a psychologist. Time, guys. Yeah, there's yeah. a psychologist. Her name is Meg Jay and she says actually, most of your life defining moments actually happen in your 20s. Mm. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm. No, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Um, and that's quite interesting. Like you said, I think a lot of people would have probably just thought I would have had lunch with um, a celebrity. Yeah. I think that's the natural Instant, reaction. Yeah, that yeah. is the natural reaction. And the thing is, don't get me wrong, there are some amazing celebrities. Do you see what I mean? And there's a lot that we can mm. learn. E.g., you know, um, for example, I know people don't really like Kim Kardashian, but her work ethic is unmatched. It's Same with Beyonce. Insane, yeah. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Again, Michelle um, Obama, for example, she's also another amazing woman. There's so yeah, many things we can yeah. learn from them. But at the same time, how realistic is that? No. You see and what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. I love that. I love that. Come on, Jimmy. <laughs> um, next, next, next. Top five countries you would love to travel to. When you said that, immediately three African countries came to head. It's <laughs> really that. interesting. <laughs> um, okay, so top five: mm. South Africa, mm. Kenya, mm. Gambia. Okay. I definitely, definitely want to go to um, Italy. Yeah. I love wine, obviously. obviously. I mean, it's not an Italian wine, but yeah. No. Um, and oh, a last one: Japan. As you've said earlier as well. So I again, cultural Japan. aspects of it. Um, yeah. One of my friends has been and she said it's amazing. So mm. those are the five on my list. If I can add another one, I'm going to say Jamaica. Look at, <laughs> Look at that. She just went to throw. And she says, I talk too much. Okay. Jamaica. Um, <laughs> that's amazing. Is there any particular reasons why those countries particularly stand out? Yeah. So for me, Gambia is not a cliche place. I feel mm. like a lot of people... Um, talk about going to certain places over and over again, whereas yeah. Gambia is not really top list for most people. Yeah. That's one. Mm. Kenya, I would love to do a safari. Mm. South Africa, Joburg, Cape Town, you know, yeah. the usual. Yeah. Italy, I love wine. And Japan, mm. the cultural aspects. Amazing. And your bonus, Jamaica? Because <laughs> it's Jamaica. <laughs> and I love their music. And also their food is delicious. <laughs> it is, to be honest. Who doesn't like Jamaican food? Yeah. Um. Okay. And then next question, number six. What is a misconception about you? Hmm. Misconception. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Hear me out. I'm hearing. I'm listening. So one thing... I mean, I've got two things to be honest, but one thing I would say is that people think I'm really serious, mm. whereas I'm extremely playful. <laughs> Do 
So like, if you see me at work, for example, and it depends on what capacity you know me in, mm. but if you see me at work or maybe on Instagram or day to day, you would think I'm a really serious person. Mm. But if you know me personally, you would know that I'm super playful. <sighs> Beyond. <laughs> She's playful, guys. Yeah, I'm She's super playful. playful. Um, yeah. And I think another thing that people maybe think is that I go out a lot, whereas mm. I'm the biggest homebody you ever. Are. Yeah, I love yeah. being in my house. I love hosting my, in my own space. So, mm. you know, do you like going out? Yeah, once in a while. Yeah. But I like to be in my house. Yeah, balance is a good thing. Like yeah. being able to- Am I balanced to... though, would you say? Uh... <laughs> She's basically trying to say no in a nice way. <laughs> yeah, not really. I don't think so. I think like- I love my I, house. But yeah, you love yeah. your house. Mm -hmm. But I think like like you say, when it's time to kind of go out and you know, you know how to kind of just say, Okay, it's time. Like, you know, this is my turn up time, so let me enjoy. But yeah. generally speaking, she's definitely a homebody. <laughs> definitely a homebody. Um question seven. What are your top three music genres? Look at her. Have okay, at her. so number one is Ratchet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure a lot of you would have guessed that by the way she just did. <laughs> so <laughs> Obviously, guys, I know Ratchet is not a music genre, but that's what I like. Mm -hmm. So, like, when I'm in the gym, that is the music I need. If I need to do a talk, if I need a confidence boost, okay. I'm going to listen to something that's Ratchet. Okay. City Girls, Lakia, mm. Big Lotto, things like that. Because it just gives you Cardi. I don't know Because she's, she's a grandma. <laughs> but you know what I mean? But it gives you, like, a confidence boost. Mm. Um, number two... I'm gonna say Afrobeat, and then number three, I'm gonna say slow jams. I love slow jams. Oh. If a, you're a nineties baby, I'm sure you do. Yeah, you? I'm very, very, very in tune with lyrics. So mm. depending on my mood, depends on the type of music I'm gonna listen to. Okay, I was yeah. just gonna say, do you feel like music plays a part in, you know, people's moods and like 100%. certain like environments they're in? One hundred percent. There's a reason why, like you know, mm. if you're if you go to church and stuff, they say certain music you shouldn't mm. really listen to. And mm. it does influence your mood, if we're completely honest. Yeah. Yeah. So when I listen to like, all them big lotto, Lakia, listen, I will hip thrust 100 <laughs> plus kg in the gym and I will be sitting there like, yeah, calm. Do you mm. know what I mean? If I need to do a talk and I need a confidence boost, I'm going to listen to some cocky music mm. as opposed to like a slow jams where somebody had their heart broken. That's do you see what amazing. I mean? Yeah. So some people would actually pick up the phone and call somebody and be like, can you just give me some confidence boost? And then it'll be like, you're amazing. Motivational quote. <laughs> But your motivational quotes is in the music. Is in the music. Okay. It's in the music. Okay. I That's why that. when you were saying that, I, I said to you, what makes you smile? I was mm. like, for me, it's music. I mean, mm. food is obviously number one, <laughs> but music is also up there. Okay. I hear that. Yeah. Music is Because it's, it's quite interesting because even if I wanted to get into the mood and just relax and just vibes, I'm listening to Afrobeats. Even yeah. if I need a But you just love Afrobeats in general because you do. actually listen to anything other than Afrobeats on a day to day. No. You see. If it's not Afrobeats, it's maybe a podcast. Can you imagine it? Can you imagine hip thrusting to like a, po a podcast? But like, that's, I think for me, that's the whole point. I don't do the whole hip thrusting. Okay, cool. What about squatting? Deadlifts? RDLs? Anything? I'll just listen to inspirational quotes and stuff. Like and inspirational music. It's interesting because I can listen to that, but I listen to that in the morning when I first wake up when I'm in the shower or about to get ready for a walk or something along those lines but i don't know i think for me i'm just conscious about what i pour into me and i know no, Afrobeats isn't necessarily like a positive message because a lot of times i'm not even talking sense but <laughs> I th that's also but, true but i think like the beat of it is just like oh i'm just enjoying myself i think the moral of the story is that flaky <laughs> aka for like a, aka naomi's a grandma but yeah <laughs> call me what you want i like my Afrobeats. Um, i like Afrobeats too guys <laughs> okay question eight how do you want people to remember you? Ooh. Mm. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. I love that question. And I feel like everyone that comes into contact with me, mm. I want them to feel like I add value to them. I love that. Yeah, that is literally it. So that is, yeah. When I do talks or when I do like my book talk or just general talks, I always ask at the end of it, how do you want to be remembered? Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, this sounds really harsh, by the way, guys, but we're all returning to dust. We're all returning 100%. to God. We're all yeah. returning to Allah, whoever you believe in. Mm -hmm. Um, But at the end of it, how do you want to be remembered? And for me is I want to touch the people that I come Ooh. into contact with. I want to add value. Come on. Um, so that's yeah. that's that's it. There's nothing um, else to add to that. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> and just to piggyback off of that, because you know I like a little piggyback. <laughs> but like, I just feel, I think it's so important. I feel when you do something that's so meaningful in life, something mm. with purpose, it honestly, 
has a different kind of impact. It gives you a different kind of self fulfillment. You it know? does. And it's so different. It's so different. It's like so when different. I've done my events in the past, it, yeah. Oh, when people would come up to me and be like, "Thank you, like, thank you for putting this on. Thank you for doing this for us." I feel like, wow. Yeah. That's worth more than any kind of money that I could have got from this, you know? Literally. Yeah. I and mean, we were talking about this off camera and we were saying about being money motivated or purpose motivated. Exactly, and I would yeah. say that even though we have money motivations, we are purpose driven people. A hundred percent. So yeah. Uh, and that's why we're here, guys. That's why yeah. we're here. Come on. Um, okay, so next question, number nine. If you had to choose between going to the gym... <laughs> I don't know this answer, to be honest. But if you had to choose between going to the gym or not reading a book... And it could be an inspirational book, motivational mm. book. Which are you getting rid of? So the thing is, guys, l I mean, we both know the answer to this question. So <laughs> I love reading, but I love the gym too. So it's interesting because I would definitely give up not reading a book because mm. from the book, I can learn knowledge from you. I can learn knowledge yeah. from my manager. I can learn knowledge from work. I can learn knowledge from pretty much anywhere mm. or anyone I come into contact with. Mm. But I cannot get the health benefits that I get from the gym. But then you say that, but then mm. can't you go for a run outside? Could you not do a workout in your house? Absolutely. I could do a workout in my house. And going for a run is very different to lifting weights. It's a very, very different thing. And again, mm. going to the gym teaches you things that some you can't get from elsewhere, e.g. consistency, e.g. discipline. You know I'm big on the consistency and discipline mm. as well. So do you know what I mean? Because going to the gym, if I start and I'm like, okay, today I'm lifting you know, I'm doing a deadlift and it's 70 kg maybe, for example, or then 80 kg. I'm pushing yeah. myself every week. I'm teaching myself that I have to show up. I have mm. to get there. So okay. I would definitely pick the gym. Okay. Um, okay. I'll keep the gym and get rid of the books. Okay. Even though I have a library. <laughs> <laughs> and gym membership. But yeah. <laughs> okay, fair. Fine. I mean, like I said, I knew, I, sh I probably should have asked a different question because that was, I was just trying to challenge her just to see, really, is there anything that she would give up for the gym? But I mean, to be honest, is there anything I would give up for the gym? Maybe, you wouldn't. I don't think so. I, I was thinking and it didn't really <laughs> land. So, um, okay, question 10. City girl. Are you a city girl? As in, like, would you prefer not sit? You see? Is he just about me? You see? Is he behavior? No. But, like, a city girl, as in, <laughs> are you more of a city girl? Like, you'd prefer London or a city, mm. like, I don't know. Well, Dubai, different. Dubai or New York versus New York, you know that cold. <laughs> I'm already feeling the cold. But yeah, but in the summer they get good summers. They, they get do, seasons, like it, but they like get London. extremes of each. Yeah, that's the only thing. Which can be nice. I mean, snow is cute. In you know, yeah, when I'm inside. Okay, <laughs> so snow is cute when I'm question. inside. <laughs> are you a city girl or mm -hmm. are you more of a country girl, like village? You know, a in, village in the village. Yeah, country. yeah. I don't. Even... <laughs> the Western world call it country. African people call it village. Okay, yeah, that's actually so true. But um, <laughs> I'm a Gemini. Mm. So and you're a Gemini. I am too. Exactly. So you know we like a bit of both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for me, I feel like I like working. I like being ambitious, and I feel like that really goes with the city girl life. Mm. But at the same time, we all need downtime. Mm. Um, and if you know, I was in Wales recently, so mm. and my phone wasn't working, so nobody could text me, <laughs> nobody could call me, and mm. I was here for it. Mm. So I feel like I like a bit of both. There's no okay. one way answer for me on that one. Okay, all right, all right, all right. I hear that, <laughs> I hear that. And yeah. you're a Gemini too, so I know you're gonna say the both. Yeah, I would've said both too, Yeah, let me not lie. Um, <laughs> what's one thing you can't live without? Oh my gosh, even this question, I should've asked a different one. Because as so I'm guys, looking to the right, I can- thing I can't live without is common. No, 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 bring, bring them all out. To be fair, I have like five in my bag, but this I've got two next to me. Oh, they even different. They even different brains and different colors. Oh, no. This is just embarrassing because your lips need to be moist. moist no, but breath. one should be enough. Why? Now, can you explain to the people why do you need to carry so many on? So, what happens if you lose one? I'm tired of her, guys. What tired. happens if you lose one again? So, for me, I'm normally quite grumpy if I lose one. So, the best thing to do is just to have multiple. So, I have some in my gym bag, some in my work bag, some in my work locker. Just day to day so that I'm not grumpy. And the thing is, again, if you're if you're related to me, you already know, like my brother, my brothers and my mom are like, this is a sickness. But it let is, me tell you, it is. if I, I was, was on a deserted say. island and I had to take one item, you already know what it's going to be. This is just embarrassing. I don't know if there's <laughs> anyone else out there that's like you. If you are, please comment. To but... be fair, Carmex should sponsor me because I've been using them for over 15 years. This um, is outrageous. Yeah. So, But I mean, can you please, can you just elaborate? 
Like, so if you lost your bag, you've lost the whole thing. So yeah. why keep five in your bag? What, like, what's the purpose? But it's okay. Do you know why? Because if I lose my bag, I literally have a drawer full at home. So it's okay. Genuinely. Guys, I need to move on to the next question. <laughs> Genuinely as well. She is absolutely out of hand with this. It's on my desk. Everywhere. Question 12. <laughs> question 12. Um, What's the next thing for you to do on your bucket list? Hmm. I've really, really, really... There's two things I want to do. Mm. Um, my mom's going to hate me for one of them. <laughs> but yeah, so one, I want to swim with the sharks and in a cage though, guys. Um, and then two, I want to... Um, hot air balloon. I want to do a hot air balloon. Okay, let's go back to the shark one because <laughs> am I, I was very confused on that. Does that sound like something normal? Guys, does that sound like something normal? Please tell me. Guys, let me say something. So me and my dad are more like the daredevils and then my mum and my brothers are more like is everything all right? So a couple of years ago, when we was all in Dubai on holiday, I wanted to swim with the sharks. And my dad was like, yeah, let's do it. So I said to my mom, I'm going to book it. And she was like, uh, while I'm alive and while I'm in this country, that's not going to happen. It's not. <laughs> so I haven't swam with the sharks yet. If I do ever swim with the sharks, guys, I'm definitely going to post a video for you guys. But the first thing I would say is hot air balloon. Less. But swimming with the sharks is definitely up on that. I just don't understand. Why does a bucket list have to be something that is near death? Why? Do you know what it is? I like a little bit of adrenaline. I like a little bit of something that I'm like, oh my God, that's so unique. That's so different. Adrenaline that can kill you. No, it's a lie. But we can, everything can kill you. Don't start this whole, if you walk <laughs> outside, you don't yeah, know you can get hit by I'm a literally about to say don't that. Don't even start that nonsense. <laughs> because a shark, it's like you're walking into death. It's like you're walking into a trap. Like, oh. Would you go to, but you would go to a safari, right? I'd go to a safari, but I mean, do you know what? Bye. Anyway, <laughs> I hope you lot enjoyed this episode of Getting to Know Us. If you want to know more, let us know. And let us know what kind of questions you want us to answer if there's questions that we haven't asked because obviously they were Absolutely, random. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so yeah, I would say cheers with the wine, but you already know how we feel about the wine. Yeah, so it's just a... Yeah. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye.